Hey guys, welcome back. I'm John from Born to Produce. So in this lesson, we're going to look at mono versus stereo recording of instruments. Um, so obviously, if you only use one mic on its own, then you will get a mono signal, which is absolutely fine for most things. But what if you want to actually capture the sort of stereo image of the performance instead of or as well as the mono recording. Well obviously that will require two microphones and there are a few different ways you can get a stereo recording. These are a spaced pair or AB pair where you place two microphones a few feet apart pointing at the performer to pick up the stereo field. Uh, in this case, you can use omnidirectional or cardioids, although again, in home studio, you will most likely want cardioids as they will pick up less room sound. This technique can give a nice wide sound, but due to the mics being spaced quite far apart, uh, you can run into phasing cancellation issues when played in mono just due to the sound hitting the different microphones at different times because they're so far apart. Uh, now, just my personal opinion, but I would only use this to uh, pick up a very sort of wide performance, like a sort of three-piece ensemble or something like that. Uh, and then I would use that to mix in with a decent mono signal. For home studio and recording a single performer, I would probably just use a crossed stereo pair or XY pair um, over this pretty much every time. But we'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, and once you've recorded your mics, they would then need to obviously be panned uh, in your door. They would need to be panned hard left and hard right, you know, depending on whether they were left or right mics. So perhaps one of the most common and well-known techniques or stereo techniques is the crossed stereo pair. As mentioned, this is ideal for picking up sort of single performer or even a larger group if they are arranged correctly around the mics. Uh, the benefit of this is the mics are literally right next to each other, so there can be no phasing issues caused by the sound reaching the two mics at different times. So it transfers better to mono playback. With this technique, I would always use a coincident setup, meaning that the mics are almost touching. You can set them up to be, say, sort of 10 inches apart, uh, which is called non-coincident, but there really is no reason to do this, and it can just introduce sort of minor phasing issues due to there being a slight distance between the mics. Much better to keep them close. Uh, again, once recorded, these would then need to be panned hard left and hard right in your door, you know, depending on where the mic was positioned. The next type of stereo recording is called a mid-side pair, which I actually mentioned earlier in the tutorial when talking about the figure of eight microphone. So a mid-side pair uses one cardioid mic that faces directly at the center of the performer and their instruments, and one figure of eight or bi-directional mic just underneath that uh, that faces left and right, and so picks up the off-axis signal. When recorded into your door, the process is slightly more involved than just panning hard left and right. You would need to duplicate the side track, that's the figure of eight mic recording, polarity reverse the duplicate, which you do in the channel settings, pan the original hard left, then pan the duplicate hard right, link the faders, and of course you leave the cardioid mic just dead center on its mono track. Then once that's set up, all you do is mix the two figure of eight recordings that you've got, the original and the one that you duplicated and polarity reversed, and you mix that into the mono cardioid mic signal. And that basically lets you choose sort of how wide you want the final signal to sound. So my preferred method really is the uh, crossed stereo pair, the XY pair. Um, and in a home studio, there's not really much use for any other type. Of course, the mid side pair is actually quite handy, especially if you wanna record vocals, you can use it to get a slightly wider sound, although I wouldn't say it's like a complete game changer. But the cross stereo pair always works really well for me. And of course, you can just use two cardioid mics as well. So it's pretty accessible and easy to set up. And the results are usually always good, especially for things like acoustic guitar, as you really get a sense of the whole sort of width of the performance. Um, so personally, I like to get as much stereo recording as possible. Um, so for any instrument that it will be effective for, we will get a stereo recording. So in this case, it's literally only the guitar. There's no point um, doing a stereo recording of the sax, it would just sound weird. And double bass, of course, it's an upright instrument, so there's not really any sort of stereo movement going on. So I hope you found that helpful, and I'll see you in the next lesson.